Thanks a lot, thank you. Well, um, can we get the chairs on the stage, please? Because it's time for the first panel of the day, and I'm very excited about this topic because it was, it, it is uh, one of the main themes of the conference and one of the most important topics in the whole metaverse and Web3 narrative. How do we actually change the world for better? And how do we make our lives and people's lives better with the help of technology? So it's time for the first panel of the day, uh, which is dedicated to sustainability goals and social impact, technology for good. And I can't be more excited about an absolutely stellar lineup for this panel. Please give it up for fantastic moderator, Catherine Ross, senior journalist at Be In Crypto. Kath, we need you on stage. <laughs> Hi everyone, what is up? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hi everyone, the merge, huh? Okay, I'm kidding. So our panel is gonna be about, the, uh, as Olga just said, about social impact and global sustainability goals. We're gonna rock it, we're gonna hit it. And l without further ado, I'm gonna introduce my lovely speakers. So please, uh, everyone, be so kind as to welcome. Um, Marva is not here. Mihaela Ulioru, Sanmit Sai Kuchar, and Valerie Holly. Okay, yeah, give it up for, for them. Are you sure? Yes. I think I'm going to sit here. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I'm Catherine, by the way, I forgot to mention this. So, um, again, we're going to talk about sustainability goals and global social impact. The fact of the matter is that I'm pretty sure you have heard it before, you have talked about it before, and sometimes, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm not okay with the fact that people use this topic to make themselves look better, and that's why we will try to be as harsh as possible, as candid as possible, right? So, um, but before we go into that, I would like you guys to just talk a little bit about yourself. Um, what, what do you do, what your project do, or what, what do you do at the universities that you uh, teach at? Okay, let's start with you. Hello, hello everyone, uh, good morning. I am uh, Valerie Hawley, I'm the Director of Corporate, Corporate Partnership at uh, Sky. Sky is the Sorbonne Center for Artificial Intelligence uh, in Abu Dhabi. We have two entities, one in Paris and one in Abu Dhabi. And the goal of this institution is to bridge the gap between academia and the private business partner and raise the uh, adoption of AI in the, in the private and the government sectors. Uh, so that it's not just a, an academic thing. The other things that I do, I'm also a startup founder and I am also an investor. Uh, I'm a general partner for a True Global Venture, uh, for Plus, which is a fund that is dedicated to blockchain and blockchain uh, use cases. Thank you. Okay, Sanmeet. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, my name is Sanmeet. Uh, I'm the vice president at uh, HMD Global. We are the home of uh, Nokia phones. Uh, we are the market leaders in uh, feature phones and uh, we are trying to scale up our smartphone business. Uh, uh, at HMD Global, I lead the business uh, for India and uh, MANA, which is Middle East and North Africa. Uh, at a personal level, I have uh, done work around uh, leveraging technology to track uh, visibility in the retail stores, specifically the mom and pop stores. I'm based in Dubai, and I'm so excited to be a part of the Meta Week and this panel. Thank you so much, Valerie. Um, Mihaela Oliero, oh, I am strategic <laughs> impact leader at Input Output, which are the developers of Cardano blockchain. My work as an impact leader is following what impact means, which is related to a theory of change. That means, what change do I want to affect in the world? And this is written in the very mission of our company, which is the virtuous rebuilding of the systems of the world to enable people to take full control of their lives. I hope to have the opportunity to yeah, tell more. Yeah, very well put. Thank you. Um, so let's just dive right into this. Um, 
The truth is, is that technology, and we're going to be talking about technology not only in the context of the metaverse or NFTs or uh, digital assets, but technology in general as well, right? So the truth is, is that technology in the first place was created to make money, and that's totally okay, right? Because it's usually something great that is going to revolutionize or innovate the entire industry and it's going to bring so much money to the founders and everybody's so excited and promoted this way. So my question is, is it really fair to assume and to expect from the technology and companies that build uh, the products and use the technology to actually do something else than earn money? Okay, Valerie. Well, I'm not sure that technology uh, has been uh, created for money. I think uh, technology, uh, coming from the academic uh, background, I think uh, it's, uh, it's just the quest for the human being to uh, better understand the world, uh, to make it better, more affordable, more, uh, more convenient. Uh, and I think that's what the drive for technology is. And uh, I think the media and our society have made uh, so that uh, uh, tech people are now uh, very uh, prominent. Uh, have, uh, with crypto, I have a lot of money. But I think the drive for technology is more a deeper understanding of the world we live in. And uh, therefore, it goes with impact. Fair enough. Michaela, I, I thought you yes. wanted uh -huh. to add something. Yes, for me, my perspective is a bit different. I think technology was started from a need. And the word itself comes from Greek, techne and logos, which means the art and craft, uh, and, and actually the systematic treatment of a craft. And, you know, if, if we look at the evolutionary process, I'm also a scientist, the gorillas are using sticks with leaves to uh, get ants from holes and eat them. That's a technology. Then we evolved, yes, and we used spears, and we used the arch to hunt. It was the need to eat. The plow is a technology. And here I make my point. And I think with the plow, we made the shift into, towards what you are saying, and that is from uh, you know, being a part of nature to oppressors of nature, because then we had to beat an animal to use the plow for us and the ox, yes, and from then on it evolved, yes, so how can I enrich, how can I be more effective, how can I, so I believe that we have an opportunity now, and that is, yeah, Bitcoin started <laughs> to reverse that, we have an opportunity now to use technology for good. Thank you, Sammy. Yes, thanks, uh, uh, so I would address it at two levels, one is um, from a business point of view and then from a technology standpoint. And I believe that uh, irrespective of technology, any business should be very clear on what's the purpose of the business and what is it that you're trying to solve. And uh, when employees uh, wake up in the morning and get to work, they should be clear on what is the larger purpose that the business exists, what is the reason for that. And uh, you know, what is the problem that you are trying to solve and what's the opportunity that you're trying to leverage and once you are clear on that the business and the profits would follow and the same goes when technology is integrated into the business that uh, once you are clear that this is the problem which the technology is going to solve or how technology is going to make the world a better place or what is it going to change in the world we are very clear that you know the business uh, is going to make profit and therefore it is integrated into the business. Now coming to technology, I think uh, the point in my mind at least is very clear. I believe that technology can definitely change the world. Now the question is whether it is changes it for the good or otherwise and that is something which is in our hands and therefore it's imperative that we hold technology accountable and ourselves accountable for how we are going to create a meaningful social impact using technology. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be real with you for a minute, guys. Um, I know that we're here to hustle, to network, and just, you know, to enjoy life. But just take one minute to think about how fortunate we are. We are here in the one of the most sophisticated cities in the world. Uh, we're here in, wearing nice clothes. We probably had breakfast. So we are so fortunate to have what we have. Uh, but the next part of my question is, um, 
the United Nations has um, implemented the sustainable goals. There are 17 of them, um, and they are aimed to help those who are less fortunate, right? And I'm going to read some of them. The, to make sure that we uh, are on point and talking about something very substantial. So, um, the United Nations has defined sustainable goals uh, and issues as no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, reduce inequalities, industry, innovation, and infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions, and partnerships for the goals. The reason I just said all that is that I, I am very skeptical, and I'm not sure that technology can help many of those goals. For instance, I was thinking, how would I use technology to help hunger? Is there a marketplace where I would share my leftovers? Like, I, I don't really know how technology and if technology can help some of those goals. So I would like to hear your thoughts on that. Okay, Michaela. Yes. So um, uh, yeah. yes. So and I've been, on, <laughs> yeah. I've been on a panel with the United Nations World Food Program um, head of the accelerator. So, um, and he shared that yes, technology can help. What? They, they deliver aid to people who are unbanked using crypto. And those people can start a business. There are many other projects which uh, are related to this. So, the, the financial inclusion aspect, which was presented here in the DeFi talk before this panel, so has presented many, many such uh, uh, applications. For example, people now can own, can ha can own their land. In many countries, this is even not a possibility. They can have insurance. They can uh, create collective action. For example, because of technology, and I think Valerie <laughs> has more to say about this, we can get the data from satellites and we can see the depletion of the planet. What we do, we can have a reflection of that. And then we can harness collective action in order to improve the situation. I have many examples. I think hopefully we have a chance to talk yeah. about this. Yeah. But yes, my answer is yes, technology mm -hmm. can help a lot. Okay, Valerie? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, w I would like to, uh, to bounce back of this idea of uh, getting a global perspective. The technology, the metaverse, I mean, we, we got that with uh, Web2, with the internet, where suddenly we could uh, see what was happening somewhere else in the world. My kids are more aware of the global news than me because they are on uh, Instagram and TikTok and they have all the news on that. So uh, with, the web, we, with the web too, we already, uh, the planet becomes smaller, the world becomes smaller because we know what's happening in the Philippines, we know with the, uh, the flood in Pakistan, we know on a very uh, daily and uh, uh, constant basis what's happening in the world. And I think with the metaverse that will be even more. So we will have this, uh, this uh, global perspective, this shared humanity in the metaverse. Um, we have uh, the blockchain has created global com community. People have never seen each other, but they are, they are really uh, communities. I mean, the DAOs are communities and so on. So I think uh, we will get one step further in this global perspective that we need to really embrace the problems that the world has, has now, like climate change, like inequality, like things, and that will give us more, uh, more power to solve them. I mean, I start as a, an advocate for sustainability and uh uh, and I will soon realize that individual action won't make, uh, won't move the needle. I mean, we need a global action. We need a global uh, uh, synchronization of all our action. And uh, the Web3 is, uh, is uh, enable that conversation and that global perspective. So I think that's one point. The second point with blockchain and um, uh, we have uh, transparency and uh, we have uh, traceability. And that's also a way with AI we can, uh, we can reduce the waste. So all these technology are really uh, on the spot to uh, really optimize our processes and make, uh, make things better for the world. 
um, and the last point with the metaverse and with all the technology, digital technologies that are coming on and the fact that everybody in the world, people have a, a phone normally, the education side of it, I mean we, we can reach out to many more people to educate them on various uh, issues, on climate change, on, uh, on many other issues uh, that are, so in a way I think yes, I think the, I, I'm a great believer that tech is going to be the only saviour if we have to save uh, the planet. Um, help me out here, I have covered so much and so many topics and I have talked to founders, especially right now, everybody's talking about Web3, but to be fair guys, Web3 is not here yet, do not hate me, but the fact is that infrastructure is not ready. If you are ready, talk to me, I'd love to hear from you, but the fact is that the developers that are working on products connected to Web3 and connected to something that is gonna be known as decentralized internet, right? They are sure that there is so much coding in the future, we're not there yet. So, and, and I know that a lot of people are using the words metaverse and NFTs as a way to market themselves and they are mostly using them as incentives for their products, um, especially gaming, right? And they're a play to earn and move to earn and then right now earn to own a lot, a lot of the concept like that. But I'm curious about can Web3 in general, I hate, I hate being generalistic, but still, how would that help pure water and sanitation? Is there a way to do that? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes, I, um, I mentioned collective action, and this is again, yes, um, um, I call that, you know, the wallet's economic identities, because people can actually, without having a bank account, everybody can get some aid, some initial borrowing. There is this concept, which at least in our company has developed, it's called the real FI. That means, for example, a small farmer can borrow from our company in crypto, and they can um, sorry. So they can borrow from our company and with that, those money they can buy from a supplier. Then they can sell and make a profit, pay back the company and start a business. In much the same manner, we can have collective action. So everybody can now support a project which they believe in. So we have impact investors harnessed from the community which want to do good. Usually whales are interested in what you mentioned, yes, in enriching themselves and their portfolios and so on and so forth. People, the people who really are, need that water, who need the sanitation, they have no access to means to invest in that. Now they do. And they have, there, are, there are means to borrow, to lend through smart contracts, to guarantee that they will return um, the money, the, and also to track their good behavior and their credit without an outside of the current financial system. So, mate, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Um, let's talk about maybe other technology, not only Web3 and everything related to that, if, if you have something to say. Uh, and if we're not talking about Bitcoin mining as a sustainable source of energy and using renewable uh, sources and stuff like that, can any other technology prompt clean and affordable energy? Is there, I know I'm put, putting you on the spot guys here, but let's have a conversation. Yes, yes. So um, first of all, um, I think uh, it's a great topic uh, uh, to, you know, put ourselves uh, away from our comfort zone and talk a little bit about uh, uh, these uh, sustainability development goals and uh, what's happening in the emerging economies and the problems that the world is facing. So I want to discuss a couple of points. One is you mentioned about uh, climate and how uh, we can work on uh, uh, climate, climate change. And one of the things which immediately comes to mind is uh, shopping and uh, reducing the carbon footprint. And today a lot of uh, shopping is still happening on the uh, uh, in the malls and physically mm. and going forward one of the things web 3.0 has a lot of potential uh, in achieving is uh, democratizing that and uh, uh, making sure that shopping experience uh, which you get in the malls or by visiting physical stores can be attained sitting in your living room mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, not only gives you a great experience but also helps those who can't access these places uh, be able to do that uh, much easily and have a great experience. That is one. 
Secondly, you mentioned the first point on, uh, on achieving the objective of uh, zero hunger, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's an important one and uh, on the face of it, it looks that it's very difficult to solve that using technology. But I'm just, again, thinking as of now and if you look at any big city, let's say a, at least a two million plus population city, and we know that food is a perishable item and uh, if we look at any of these cities in the emerging markets, we'll know that uh, a lot of people still are uh, going to sleep in the night without, uh, you know, without a meal. Mm -hmm. And there are still a lot of places where uh, there's uh, excess, excess food, right? Mm -hmm. uh, still a lot of uh, places in the same city. Now, if we can leverage technology to track real time where you know, there is a shortage and where there is access, oh, excess. Okay. Okay. And then uh, look at, uh, leverage again GPS to track these uh, places and then find a way to pick up uh, mm -hmm. the stuff and deliver where it is needed. And uh, again, use, uh, uh, you know, authentication. Again, I'm trying to just name different technologies which can be leveraged mm -hmm. to solve this problem. Authenticate who's picking it up and delivering. Uh, it's a good way where technology can be leveraged, at least conceptually, to solve this problem. Yeah, but th this is a theoretical question right yeah. now, so that's why. And I feel like the, the first part that you mentioned has to do something with responsible consumption as well, right? Because it's just too much consumption these days. Uh, Valerie, did you have anything to add to that? Theoretically, can technology solve or help all of those sustainable goals? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, an example perhaps uh, that we uh, that we have in our portfolio, it's a company that is building uh, the Internet of Mobility. So they are using a blockchain to con connect uh, a mobility service providers so you can actually use sustainable, uh, sustainable travel. So they have an app where you can uh, book... Uh, explore, book, and pay for your door-to-door -door journey, and you're connected to uh, the scooters, uh, the rental, uh, the scooters that are in, in the on the top of uh, Norway, and from America, you can already book your scooters to uh, finish your journey after the plane, the train, and uh, and the scooter. And um, they do that on the blockchain because that enables them to use the decentralization um, uh, based of the blockchain technology and instead of marketing their services all around the world, they are building DAOs and the DAOs will be in charge of uh, um, making sure that the governance, uh, that uh, all the requirements, the legal requirements of the, of the region, of the country are applied to the mobility service providers that are offering their, uh, their services on the platform. And that's a way of uh, reducing carbon footprint and incentivizing people to uh, use uh, public transport and sustainable uh, mobility services. And to that as well, they are also developing on a B2C model, the wheel coin, which means you will be rewarded in uh, crypto every time you take uh, a sustainable mean of transport. They have a technology where you can actually detect if you're on a train, on a bicycle, on a scooter, and that enables you to uh, collect uh, points, and uh, that's also to engage and to, uh, mm -hmm. to change behavior. But that's only possible with the technology, with the blockchain, with the digital world we are living in. Um, I'm going to change the course of events a little bit. Uh, and engage the audience as much as possible. So the next part, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about real names, dropping some names that are doing something good. First of all, we do not promote those projects. We do not support them. We do not endorse them. We are just aware, probably, of something that they're doing. And in our opinion, they might be doing something right. And while we're doing that, I want you guys to think about, first of all, do you have any questions? Don't be afraid to put the speakers on the spot. Be honest, be brutal if you need to, so think about it a little bit. And the last part of our conversation is going to be under the agenda, the change starts with us, with every single day, with every single action that we do. So I'm going to be asking speakers about the technology that they're using 
that make them or their life better every single day. This might be a fitness app, it might be a nutrition app, it might be an alarm clock with a nice sound. It might be, I don't know, Luna that helps you sleep better. So I want you also to think about the technology that makes your life a little bit better and share it afterwards if we have time. So think about your questions if you have any, and I would like to ask you guys, we have theorized it to the bone. We have talked hypothetical. And now let's be real. Are there any projects that are actually using technology to help the world? I'd say very cheesy, but still, okay, Michaela. Yes, um, yes, and, and uh, as you said, I'm not promoting anything, yes. but um, yes. we have introduced um, the power and uh, a means to harness the power of the community through blockchain. We have a project called Project Catalyst. Uh, our community, the Cardano community, is fully in charge with the treasury, which is a billion dollar, <laughs> yes, treasury. Mm -hmm. They decide by collective voting in what direction the money is going and which projects to support. Mm -hmm. And m most of them are impact projects. I'm going just to mention a few of them, which are most, uh, you know. For example, Open Litter Map. Okay. They call it a citizen science because they harness collective action and they create a map of where a pollution is uh, because they don't recycle or they throw garbage. They take photos and they inform their city hall. Okay. So it's, and, and then the collective can self-organize and uh, go on a cleaning spree on a weekend and so on and so forth. So the can, can you repeat thing. the name of the, of the project again? <laughs> yes, Open Litter Map. Open, okay, Open yeah, Litter Citizen Map. Science. Okay. And Sean Lynch is the, <laughs> okay. the founder, but he's, he's just a member of our community. Mm -hmm. And the funding is coming from voting uh, on proposals. Okay. So it's a DAO. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, another very, very impressive project, in my opinion, is um, Unplastify. So creating incentives for companies okay. to give up their plastic. And then, yes, so they That's get, nice. they get yeah. funding for not using plastic, for finding alternative solutions. So mm -hmm. you can find that mm -hmm. also. Um, our, our own company is championing a very, very uh, dear to my heart project. The Rohingya Identities Project. Rohingya population, they were, are born without any identity, and they live in the world in various countries without uh, any a proof of identity. And we create for them identities and also a learn and earn possibilities through those economic identities, through wallets, we incentivize them. And this all comes from our community. They submitted a proposal, the community votes for that. I have many more if there is time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Sanmi, do you have any real use cases, projects that are doing something good? Yes, yes. So I want to mention a couple of uh, them. One for the developing world and second uh, for the developed world. The first one is on, um, uh, you know, solving the problem of uh, quality education and uh, gender inequality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are the two important uh, uh, goals uh, for SDG. And uh, in some ways, these two are related to each other, okay. right? Uh, so, uh, and I'm saying that because uh, somewhere uh, this gender inequality happens because of the education of the girl child in some of these developing markets, right? So it's yeah, important. Yeah. And um, so just to give an example, uh, uh, in India, for example, there are 350 million people who are still not, uh, who do not have access to smartphone, who are still mm -hmm. on the feature phones. And when the pandemic happened, they suddenly just could not, uh, because there was lockdown, they could not attend school because the school, the, the school was happening online, the classes were happening online. And it's uh, difficult if you do not uh, have, the, have the device with you. Mm -hmm. And if you have two kids at home, you need two devices, right? It's a yeah. difficult yeah. one. And then uh, what uh, we have done is we have tied up with uh, one of the big operators in India and uh, launched a device which is, uh, uh, you know, around uh, $55. Uh, dollars, uh, and uh, that device with the subsidy from the operator becomes much cheaper for a consumer to buy. buy. Not only that, we also offer uh, uh, like an EMI, so an installment based plan. So you don't have to buy the whole or you don't have to fund the whole device right up as you would, uh, you know, uh, put in to buy a feature phone, which could be 10 to $15 and then, uh, you know, pay the balance in small installment over 12 to 24 months, 
so mm -hmm. you know giving more access mm -hmm. uh, to children especially the girl child so that's one of the projects and second is again uh, and this is more towards the developed world and we are in this um, uh, I won't call it a habit but the urge to change our devices sometimes every six months but mostly after an year mm -hmm. and what's and the, the name of the project you're talking about it's the second uh, one? more sustainable uh, devices Sustain okay. sustainability right so impacting uh, e-waste electronic mm -hmm. waste and uh, climate so uh, what we have done is uh, and the reason people are changing devices of one of course uh, for different people have personal reasons but one of the reasons is that there is no repairability after some time the device the ba device battery is not working and you can't open the device and it's much more difficult to repair the device mm -hmm. so what we are doing is one we are improving upon the repairability of the devices so therefore from a hardware standpoint, even after two years or three years, uh, you can have your device repaired so that you don't have, you're not forced to change it. That is one. Second, from a software standpoint, we provide uh, two years of operating system upgrades and three years of monthly security updates. So therefore, mm -hmm. your device is up to date in terms of software and security, which uh, then can okay. be used. So therefore, you are not forced to change your device. You can change it only when you want to. Okay, Valerie. Uh, yeah, so I talked about uh, IOMOB and uh, sustainable m uh, mobility, building the Internet of Mobility and the WheelCoin that is an incentive for uh, each of us to take a sustainable uh, transport mean. Another one would be uh, uh, probably a company in Kenya, Brick, who is building uh, Layer 2. Uh, blockchain, a lightning network, so that the people that are, can't have a bank account because they don't have the, they don't have the salary and the, they are not, they are rejected by the bank, are able to participate uh, to the digital economy. This layer will enable a crypto transaction with merchant without going to the uh, to the fiat uh, monetary system and will enable them to actually participate to the digital economy. So I think Africa is a big, uh, is going to be a, a big winner of the blockchain technology uh, in terms of uh, all this. Uh, I didn't yeah. catch the name. Brick. Okay, Brick. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. I have, I have two more. <laughs> two more, <laughs> okay, bring it in and then we're gonna... So, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Landano is actually creating titles for land for those people mm -hmm. who don't like have that. any. Mm -hmm. And on that basis, and the titles are as NFTs, and on that basis they can borrow money against the land mm -hmm. and develop and build and create agriculture and so on and so forth. And another one is Pezesha, which is actually an implementation of the real FI application, which uh, I presented before, in which they, they, they lend to small farmers, the small farmer is buying from supplier, then they sell, and they pay back, and they keep the profit, so create Thank an economy. Thank you. Okay, Olga, do we happen to have questions um, from the audience? Do, does anybody have any questions? I would like to call out Dr. Jane Thomason, she's here <laughs> in the first row, she should have been on that panel to be honest, I know she She's a decent expert on the topic, and I would like her to follow up and let, about, let us know about the projects that you've been following. Yeah, thanks very much, everyone, and it's wonderful to see you here and hear from you. Um, I, I did want to say two things. Tomorrow morning, we have a panel on uh, carbon offsets with two really interesting oh, okay. projects. I encourage you to do that. But also, anyone who's interested in sustainability in the region, please come and talk to me because we've got a number of activities coming up. We've got a hackathon with the Youth Hub, um, and we've also got an event on the 26th, and we're trying to build the ecosystem for blockchain and sustainability sustainability in the uh, West Asia region. So anyone who's interested, you can't miss me, come find me, and thanks for a wonderful panel. Thank you. Thank you. Olga, let's try something. Yes. Uh, Any, yeah. yeah, so can you please engage people who are looking at their phones by asking them what I just asked a couple of minutes ago, is there a piece of technology that is making your life and you better? Right, so we're talking about technology that is changing the world, and we're gonna be talking, okay, so people are leaving because they're scared. And do not say Binance, okay? Binance does not make your life better. It's gambling. <laughs> okay, no, but seriously. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> FTX is also not a good option. It, it, 
now for trading for, for, for a good quality of life. Okay, thank you so much. It's been Hi. a very inspiring talk. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask a question. Um, maybe we don't have limitless time, so I'll ask it to Mihaela. Uh, these projects seem really inspiring and have a, they seem to have a great impact. What are the opportunities, but also the challenges ahead moving forward? To, to, so we can get a successful project for those projects that you mentioned. The challenge. Usually, the greatest challenge is to fund the project, right? And that's why we um, invented, I would say, this model based on the technology on decentralized DeFi. So governance of the money is a big deal. And where do you go? The World Resources Institute. Uh, just released a report two days ago about partnering for funding impact for the SDGs. And they underline the challenges, as you mentioned, but with Project Catalyst, yes, the, the biggest challenge is still again in our humanity. I mean, are we really going to vote for those projects that are going to change the world and support them? We have now an opportunity through Catalyst. I, I hope you will go and just look at Cardano Catalyst project. So everybody can join the community and vote on their favorite project, and people can submit proposals. Now the question is, will I vote for my friend, or will I vote for something, or will I submit a proposal which is not poised for good? The speaker about spirituality made that point very clearly. It is in our power of choice. So how do we choose? That is, I believe, fundamentally the biggest challenge. Thank you for your question. We have another question here. Oh, okay. Let's take one more, okay? Yeah. Hi, uh, Jason English from CG Tech. Um, mine's more of a statement than a, than a question just relating to global social impact. So one of the things that we're doing is we're using the metaverse to train engineers. Um, and I use metaverse very lightly just because it's what everybody calls it, but really digital environments. And one of the things that we found really useful was, you know, if, in terms of this global social impact concept, in a in the oil and gas industry, which ironically is one of the big contributors towards, you know, the non-sustainability, um, you can't, it's not a very inclusive environment. Number one, getting people into these environments is extremely difficult, it's dangerous, you know, it's extremely noisy. And, um, and where we found real value is that we, we created a, a metaverse refinery, took engineers from all around the world into that metaverse refinery where we could actually train them in a non-noisy, non-impactful way and actually create a far more inclusive environment. So as a result of that, we've actually been able to scale our oil and gas business, which is a services business, nearly 10x, um, which has been unheard of in the sector. So it's just there is a different way of thinking about how you use the metaverse to, to scale your own businesses. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, do you have a technology or an app that is making your life better every day? Well, the platform that we use is called virtueworks.io. No, no, no. You oh. personally. You personally. We're not talking about enterprise, but just the general. Is there any app that is making your life better every single day? Uh, life fasting. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> just helps me check my fasting schedule, man. Okay. Fair enough. There you go. There you go. We have some names. Uh, do we have any other questions? I think we should jump to the next panel, but I would like to thank everyone. Yes, yes thank you. Uh, if I can just add one thing is uh, regarding sure. what you shared, the last uh, speaker uh, from the, the audience. Uh, there is a project called Impact OS, which actually helps visualize the carbon footprint, and I think that will be also maybe a topic tomorrow, of uh, oil and gas companies, and not only. And then they can, based on that information, improve you know, their work and, and and uh, make it more uh, friendly, let's call it uh, nature friendly. And with regard to apps, of course, there are many of them. Yeah. I would recommend rejuve.io, which is actually um, an app developed by SingularityNet. And uh, it is now running on Ethereum, but uh, they want to make it open to any uh, blockchains. Yes, Other to any blockchain. blockchain. And it is about, it tells you uh, when to exercise. It's very personalized, when to fast, when to exercise, mm -hmm. and so on. Rejuve.io. Okay. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed the conference. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks a lot. Now don't go anywhere. Dr. Jane, please don't go anywhere. <laughs> we need you here. You're going to love the next one. <laughs> oh, um, <clears throat> sorry. Um.